I was putting my lip gloss on perfectly. And then the wand decided to go all cattywampus on me and decided to go outside my lip line. So that's not a rash, that's just my stupid frickin' lip wand. Hey guys, this is Desiree and welcome to Unbound Book Reviews and today I'm going to be reviewing Ball Peen Hammer by Lauren Rowe. I can't even say the title without kind of giggling. I'm such a five-year-old. So, if I am being perfectly honest, um, I didn't really intend to read the book. Um, I hadn't really heard of it, I saw it in passing, but then my co-blogger Casey is just in love with this book to the point where I think she's going through the worst book hangover she has ever experienced. Every time she picks up another book, she's like, I miss Keeney. I'm like, I know, but you have to move on. So naturally, seeing my co-blogger in such a state makes me think, I want to do that to myself too. And I was lucky enough to uh, receive an ARC by Lauren. Um, this one is not going to be coming out until July 25th, so there still is um, quite a bit of time to pre-order this one. I believe the pre-order links are up. If they are, I will have them linked down below. If not, you should go and follow Lauren Rowe on Facebook anyway and to see some updates and teasers and just to get some more info on the book. So with all of that being said, I am so happy that I decided to read this book because I absolutely loved it. This book was so uplifting and it was so freaking funny. And if I'm being perfectly honest again, I haven't really read any um, rom-coms in the romance um, book department. I, this one is more along the lines of a romantic comedy. Now, is it cheesy? No. Which was why I was so afraid to jump the gun and just go read romantic comedy books. I was always afraid that they were going to be really, really cheesy. And I like cheesy in movies for the most part, but in books, I don't like cheesy at all. But this one was just freaking perfect. I like, I think about it and I have a smile on my face because I love Keen. I really love him and I thought I was going to hate him, but I love him. So there will be no spoiler section in this particular review because I am going to be putting it up so far before the actual release date of the book. I just don't think it's logical to have a spoiler section in this um, review right now. Um, so it's going to be entirely spoiler free. And let's move on to the synopsis, shall we? Keen Morgan wouldn't return any of my calls or texts, and I was pissed as hell about it. I didn't want to drive from Seattle to LA with a guy anymore than he wanted to drive with me, but I had no frickin' choice in the matter, at least not if I wanted to use his brother Dax's coveted parking spot at UCLA. Okay, so it turned out Keen was objectively gorgeous and fine and pretty funny too, but did he have to be so damned in love with himself? I mean, geez, the cocky way he flashed those dimples was just so orchestrated. And honestly, what kind of a guy uses the phrase baby doll with a straight face? Oh, that's right, the kind of guy who's a male stripper. Yep, the cocky jerk turned out to be Seattle's answer to Magic Mike, a stripper known as Ball Peen Hammer, which meant Keen Morgan was emphatically not the kind of guy I'd ever fall in love with. Not at all. No freaking way. Well, until Keen convinced me to fall for him, that is. Which I did. Hard. Note, Ball Peen Hammer is a full-length, standalone, sexy romantic comedy about Keen Morgan, one of four Morgan brothers introduced in the Club series. Oh good, it's a series! I just realized that. I'm so happy. Yay! That means there's more coming. Okay, so this is a standalone novel. There is absolutely no cliffhanger. And as the synopsis described, um, Madeline is making the move to UCLA. She is a documentary filmmaker and she's going to film school and she has not a whole lot of money, she's pretty strapped for cash and the man who lives across her sister, um, across the hall from her sister, has offered to give up his parking spot because he's got a motorcycle so he doesn't need it. And he has also taken her up on the offer for her to shoot promos for his um, band's tour. Now, Madeline has a bit of a paranoid sister. Her sister, Hannah, is um, not all that comfortable with Madeline, Maddie, driving all the way from Seattle to UCLA by herself. So Dax ends up convincing Hannah that 
His brother Keen will go with her. He wants to do some auditions anyway, so he'd been kind of hoping to get to UCLA at some point, or just LA at some point. And he'll ride with her. I'll text him, I'll let her, I'll let him know, and everything will be all set. Just to ease Hannah's mind. And unfortunately, Maddie never really ends up hearing back from Keen. So he ends up getting so many backed up texts and so many backed up calls that at this point he just can't keep up with them and isn't gonna bother to. So his best friend and roommate and wifey, Xander, um, takes um, a certain uh, photo exposing himself. And Maddie is not at all pleased with this and she just starts bitching him out. Sorry guys, it's like 90 degrees outside and I have a blinding white hot light just coming towards me and I'm like, it's hot. Or maybe it's just ball peen hammer. Could be either one. So Keen does end up carpooling with her and he is, as the description said, just so full of himself. And he is very much a bruh. He's kind of, um, like a, he reminds me of a laid back California surfer dude. No offense if anybody out there watching is a laid back California surfer dude. But the stereotypical hyperbolized version, you know, that bruh frat boy party kind of attitude. He has a very interesting vernacular where he, he says things like adorbsicles and says bruh and ye are or something like that. <laughs> I'll be totally honest, guys. I was not feeling... The dialogue at first. I was like, I don't know if I can get through this book. If this is how this guy is going to talk, I just don't know if I can. But Casey loved it, so I'm going to do it. And I did it, and I'm so freaking happy that I did. Because, yes, it does take some adjustment to Keen's vocabulary. He's got um, a very interesting one, words I've never heard of. But it becomes part of his charm. And you also get to learn that that's not totally who he is. That is his personality and that's just him being himself and I mean some of us are introverts and some of us are extroverts and some of us have you know different quirks. This guy just has quirks overflowing the hand basket and they're all in your face all at once. Most of us can kind of tamp it down and go okay new person don't want to be weird. He doesn't care. He is who he is and he just isn't sorry for it. And he is a male stripper. So of course he doesn't really have a whole lot of boundaries, we'll say. Um, he just, he is what he is. And he's also very full of himself. He knows he's hot. He knows that he can for sure make a woman want him. And it pisses him off that Maddie is off limits because Maddie is going to be doing these different promos for his brother Dax's band. And he's, I believe Dax is also really good friends with Hannah's boyfriend or someone in that in the Morgan family is friends with Hannah's boyfriend. So Hannah's sort of an honorary sister and therefore Maddie is an honorary sister. So she's off limits. It's like a four year old being told you can't have any cookies, but I'm going to put the cookie jar right here. And of course, that four year old is going to want to do any means necessary to get that cookie. And that's exactly how Keen feels. He just sees her and he wants her, but more for the sake of wanting her and for the sake of wanting what he can't have and proving to himself that yes, he can get any woman to want him, whether she's off limits or not. And throughout this drive, it's only a two day drive, throughout this drive, they end up having such a great connection which I was surprised as hell at because I thought there's no way that Maddie, her personality is going to be able to match up to Keen's. It's just too much. It's too out loud. I think it's going to be forced. It's not going to be real. I jumped the gun way too quickly because these characters are so unbelievably perfect together. And within the two days that they're with each other, which is basically the timeline that most of the book takes place, the majority of it is held during their road trip together, um, getting to know each other and just hanging out. So all we get is their connection. There really aren't these little spurts in between of when they get to be alone together. They're just together. And I love the hell out of that. None of it is forced. The banter between them is unlike any banter I've ever read in any other book. It's so freaking funny. 
and it was so carefree and so lighthearted. And what I had interpreted as annoyance to Keen's very loud personality, I actually loved and just fell in love with Keen. And I never saw that happening, but I really fell in love with him because it's not forced. It's not the author just writing something different for the sake of it. This is just who Keen is. And this is who Maddie is. And this is how they are together, which instantly makes it genuine. So I have a category for all of these other heroes that I've read. There is no other category for Keen. He's in his own category. So he doesn't have to compete with all of these other heroes because he's just himself. And I love him. And I loved Maddie. She was really, really funny. And yes, she had some melancholy moments, melancholy moments, but she's been through a lot. Um, again, no spoilers, so I'm not going to get into it. So Maddie does sort of want to branch out, and Keen is the perfect person to get her to come out of her shell. She wants to be this whole new woman, and she wants to have this whole new life when she goes to UCLA. She wants to leave her past behind and start fresh. And what better of a person to get you out of your own head than loud, crazy, male stripper, ball peen hammer, Keen. Also, Keen's best friend, Xander. That is the best bromance I've ever read in my entire life. I can't explain it. Xander and Keen, perfect bromance. Just perfect. So, all in all, yes, it is going to be a little bit different, but it's worth it. It is so worth it. This is, without a doubt, one of my favorite books this year. Um, and it is one of the most unique books I've ever read in my history of reading romance books. And this is a top shelf book. I love these characters. And Keen will definitely leave an impression on you. He is unforgettable. And every time I think about certain scenes that have happened in this book, or I think of Keen, I just smile. And I'm like, oh. I love him. I think he's one of those characters that's just going to stick with you for a really long time, and I definitely feel that way, and I'm feeling the hangover. Now, having mentioned that this is a, sort of a rom-com type of deal, and it is more lighthearted than most books that I've been reading, which I really needed right now. I did not need another heavy read. Um, there are definitely moments of angst in this book, uh, so it is balanced out. It's not just funny all the way down the line. There is angst, and you do get to see how these characters develop and how they develop honestly. Not forced because a climax needs to happen in a book. But it is a genuine scenario where these two characters, Kane and Maddie, have to come to a standpoint where they need to make decisions about their lives. And they need to make the decision about what they're going to be together and if they have a future together. And what it means for them individually if they go either way, if they go their separate ways or if they decide to stay together. So it is very well balanced. You don't feel like it's just, you know, kind of one note the entire time. Um, and that surprised me too because of how funny it was. I didn't really think that there were going to be any serious moments in the book, but there were. And this book just caught me completely off guard, but in the absolute best way possible. Now, the writing was really good. Um, when you have a loud character like Keen, you have to be very consistent. Um, otherwise, it falls apart. And I think the author did a really great job of being consistent with his character while simultaneously making him grow and mature, which is not easy to do with a character who has his personality. But the author managed to pull it off. And the playlist was so freaking rad. I'm talking like Keen. Wow. <laughs> okay, so with that, I'm going to end this here. I will have the buy links in the description bar below if there are pre order links up for Amazon. I believe the paperback, at least, is up on Amazon. But I will also include a link to Lauren's Facebook page. Go there uh, to see any new updates before um, Ball Peen Hammer is released. And also, Go ahead and like facebook.com slash unboundbookreviews. We will have updates as well. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And please subscribe if you are not already to see some more videos from me. 
and I will see you guys later. Bye.